24 to 27. Today we want to talk about divine wisdom. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these things of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. May I start by praying for every one of you that your house will not fall. Yeah. We've been asked to talk on divine wisdom, but you know, today is a very special day. It's a special day for remembering our nation, and, and uh, that's why you will probably notice we are a little bit out of time because the health of our nation is very, very crucial to us. At the same time, we are praying for our students because these young ones are our tomorrow and we want our tomorrow to be all right. And so, if we are a bit behind schedule today, you must understand it's a very special day. And we have been asked to speak on divine wisdom. Now, what is wisdom? Oh, I know if we ask the question, uh, the theologians will start by telling us that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, which is absolutely correct. But we're not talking about the beginning of wisdom now. We're talking about wisdom itself. And then we can go on and do a lot of study on wisdom. How well, wisdom is greater than strength. How wisdom is a defense, how wisdom gives life, etc., etc. But we don't have time for that this morning. We want to look at wisdom from the perspective of the correct application of knowledge. When you gain knowledge, which is why we send you children to school, Using the knowledge you have gained for your benefits is wisdom. For example, when you are traveling on some of our roads, and you are traveling along a road that you have never traveled before, and we are all traveling on roads we have never traveled before called the road of life, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, so, but we have to keep on moving. You can't go back, you have to keep going forward. When you are traveling along a road you have never traveled before, and suddenly you see beside the road a sign that says, narrow bridge ahead. As soon as you see that sign, you have gained knowledge. You haven't seen the bridge yet, but that sign has told you there's one bridge ahead that is narrow. A narrow bridge ahead means that, that bridge cannot take two vehicles at a time. 
If you are wise, what will you do? You slow down. Ah, correct. Thank you very much. Because you may suddenly approach the road, or the, the bridge, and find another vehicle on the other side of the road, already on the bridge. If you slow down, then you'll be able to stop safely for that other vehicle to pass before you continue on your journey. But if you are not exactly wise, I don't want to use the word foolish. <laughs> you say, narrow bridge ahead, and so what? I am an international driver. And then you step on your accelerator. You increase your speed. And all of a sudden, you appear on the bridge, and then there is a trailer on the other way, and you have to make up your mind. Do you want to die by head-on collision, or you want to die by drowning? Because usually those narrow bridges in those days were built over very deep rivers. So wisdom is, as soon as you gain knowledge, you use that knowledge for your own benefits. I'm going to give you just a few points now because of limited time how you can use the knowledge you have gained from the Word of God for your benefits so that for the rest of your life you'll be treated, even by God, as wise. Now, there are, there are two categories of wisdom which I will just mention briefly because of time. There is the wisdom that comes from above. The wisdom the kind of wisdom that God himself gives. The Bible says that wisdom is pure, clean, holy. And then, of course, there is the wisdom that comes from the devil. And that one is evil. And, I mean, that, that's the kind of wisdom you have when we talk about Yahweh. Yahoo, Yahoo people, they have knowledge and they are using it for evil. We're talking this morning about the kind of wisdom that comes from God. That's why we call it divine wisdom. In Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3, Jeremiah 33, verse 3, the Almighty God made a promise. You call on me. I will answer you. That's settled. And then some of you are businessmen and women. You know that for every contract, there is what they call the fine lines. There are certain clauses that are sneaked into the contract that will determine whether I must keep my contract with you or not. God says, you call on me, I will answer you. But then he added in his word, Jeremiah, I mean, Isaiah chapter 55, verse 6, Isaiah 55, verse 6, say, hey, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. You call on him, he hears you, the answer will come. But he then says, <laughs> you better call on him while he's near so that he will hear. So how do I know when he's near? Because he's invisible. <laughs> Job said, I look to the right, I can't see him. I look to the left, I can't see him. Uh, forward, he's not there. Backward, it's not there. How do I know when it's near? Then you see in the Bible, it is also written John chapter 4, from verse 23 to 24. John 4, 23 to 24. It says, oh God is a spirit. They that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. 
and the Father seeketh such to worship him. Saying what? You know how to worship God? You don't have to seek him. He will seek you. So when you don't know whether it's near or not, you begin to praise him, he will draw near. And if he draws near, and then you call on him, the answer will come. In other words, if we want to apply that now for, to get wisdom, whenever your prayer seems not to be working, try praise. You have been praying for something for a long time. The answer hasn't come. Put prayer aside and begin to praise him. If you praise him correctly, he will give you whatever you want. A good example is in Matthew 15, from verse 21 to 28. Matthew 15, 21 to 28. It tells us about a woman who came crying to Jesus Christ. My daughter is grievously vexed of the devil. Help me. And the Bible says Jesus didn't answer her a word. The disciples came and said, Hey, send this woman away. She's too noisy. And Jesus said, I can't even give the bread of children to dogs. The woman changed tactics. She went before the Lord, fell on her knees, and worshipped him. Minutes later, she already got what she wanted. If you learn how to praise God, even things you are not asking for, you will get. That's why you must have learned from me by now that before I begin anything at all, I ask you to shout hallelujah. To draw the attention of the one we are about to cry unto. If you learn to pray, so, if you have tried prayer and prayer has failed, try praise. You see, because there are certain battles you cannot afford to lose. There are certain prayers God must answer. And if the answer is not coming by prayer, try praise. Many of you will remember the story of uh, one of our weddings here in Lagos, Shobodu to be exact, when there was a wedding. The wedding was going very well, and then it was time to sign the register. And uh, the people were already in the vestry. As usual, the congregation was dancing and rejoicing. The husband has signed. They've given the pen to the wife to sign on the dotted line. When the husband heard a voice, somebody called him. He's the only one who heard. And he answered. And the other said, they know the meaning of that. As soon as he answered, he just dropped down from the chair and died. <laughs> So all manners of prayers began. I mean, if you were there, you would pray. Five minutes, 10 minutes, 20, 30. And the people in the church were wondering, what kind of uh, certificates are they signing? In the meantime, the bridegroom was getting colder and colder. Then the leading pastor remembered that I taught them, as I'm teaching you now, that when prayer fails, try praise. So she, he left the verse, he told the people in the verse, hey, stop praying, begin to praise God. And then he ran into the church and told the people, hey, we are coming, we will, we will join you very soon. Continue you're dancing. And everybody changed all oh, because they have been saying, God, you, you must not shame us. The God, you can't do this to us on our day of joy. 
God, uh, they change their prayers. You are the Almighty. You are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of Lords. You are the Ancient of Days. You are the Lord of Hosts. You are. And all of a sudden, the man on the floor sneezed. I said, ah, what am I doing on the floor? They said, ah, <laughs> you get off first and then we will tell you. Is there anybody who has been praying for something and you haven't gotten the answer yet? Let me hear you shout hallelujah. <laughs> Point number two. From studying the Bible, it is clear that you can use what you have to get what you need. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 25. Proverbs 11 verse 25. The Bible says, He that watereth shall be watered. The African elders will say, You pour water before you, then you can walk on soft ground. In 2 Kings chapter 4, from verse 8 to 17, 2 Kings chapter 4, from verse 8 to 17, there was this woman, the Bible called Great Woman. And uh, she had only one problem. One problem that her money and her wealth cannot handle. She was barren. You can't buy a child in the market. And in those days, they, they wasn't uh, going to do IVF or whatever. It's constantly she saw a man of God passing by. And one day, she confronted the man of God and said, Sir, you must come to my house to eat. The man of God said, who told you I'm hungry? Who told you I, I said, eh, eh, eh. you're not going. You must come to my house to eat. The Bible said she compelled the man of God. Thank God for stubborn women who are stubbornly good. Oh. <laughs> the man of God went, ate, you know the story found that uh, <laughs> the food in this woman's house is different from the one in the book. And he kept on coming back. And the woman said, hey, I think we will go a step further and build the man of God an apartment. The Bible tells us one day the man of God was lying on the bed that this woman made. And the Spirit of God came to him, you'll be eating this woman's food, sleeping on the bed she made. You didn't even ask her if she had a problem. And when the man of God asked her, what can I do for you? I can talk to the president, I can talk to the king, I can, and she said, I don't need anything. And then the man of God discovered that she was buried. I said, ah, all right. I can give you something money cannot buy. There are certain things your power, your position, your influence cannot buy. And there's always a saying, <laughs> money can buy a bed, it won't buy you sleep. But you can use what you have to get what you want. Meaning what? Even if you don't have anything at all, you still have your voice. With that voice, you can bring the heavens down. Once again, let me hear you shout hallelujah. In 2 Chronicles chapter 1, from verse 6 to 15, 2 Chronicles 1, 6 to 15, the Bible tells us that Solomon offered to God a thousand burnt offerings. That boy knew he needed wisdom to rule his people. He was king, all right, but he needed wisdom. 
And he decided to use what he had to get what he wanted. He sacrificed a thousand burnt offering. And the Almighty God had to visit this boy. The one who can worship me like this deserves a visitation. I decree in the name that's above every other name that somebody will receive a visitation from God. I remember very clearly the story of one of my daughters. Some of you will remember her story. A great medical doctor. She had her own hospital. Doing very well. But all these years, nobody had ever come to her to say, Sister, how now? Beautiful lady, highly educated, doing extremely well, but dying practically of loneliness. And then she got a brainwave. She heard that I was coming to visit the town. And she had a lot of money, so she went and bought a car. They said, when I get to America, usually they rent a car. This time, they said, You're not, they're not renting a car. You will use my car. And funny enough, you find that each time I was going to enter the car, she spread uh, a kind of tower, a beautiful thing, over where I would sit. After I left, she parked the car in the garage. And every night she would go and sit where I sat. And I said, God, your servant sat here. There must be a little bit of anointing left here. Use that anointing to destroy my yoke. About a year later, I got a phone call from America. What was going on? Oh, you remember Sister Swan? So I said, yes. She's in the hospital. Oh, what's the problem? Uh, shortly after you left, a man came and said, how now? So three months later, she got married. And now she's in the hospital to deliver the first baby. She used what she had to get what she wants. I may not have money. I may not have influence. But I have my mouth. Do I hear somebody shout another hallelujah? Another point quickly. There is this law called the law of harvest. It's there in the Bible. Galatians chapter 6 from verse 7 to 8. Galatians 6, 7 to 8. And he said, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that's what he shall reap. This law works for everybody, whether you are Christian, Muslim, idol worshiper. The law of harvest works for everybody. And then the Bible went further to say in Matthew chapter 7, verse 16, Matthew 7, verse 16, that it is what you sow, the exact thing you sow. That's the kind of thing that you will reap. You can't sow thorn and expect to reap grapes. And believe me honestly, if you sow rice, you are not going to reap yam. It's whatever you sow exact thing you saw. <laughs> I've told you this story before. When the Holy Ghost service was small at the camp and the people were less than two, three thousand coming. When it is time to pray, I will lay hand on everybody. I'm the only one pray for everyone. But little by little, the crowd grew. And by the time we were running into thousands, I decided that I have to use wisdom. And so I got some of my senior pastors that they would join me in praying. And 
to encourage them, I gave each one of them a tie that I've used when ministering. I told them, there's anointing in this tie. Wear it. The power of God will be walking through you. And they believe, and you know the judge shall live by faith. So, so they will discover it. Because in those days, we, we had plenty of time, we were few. When we lay hands on the sick, I mean, when we lay hands on anybody, they fall under the anointing. And this, my uh, senior pastors discovered that whenever they lay hands to, uh, the same kind of miracles happening through me was happening through them. And then all of a sudden, I discovered something. Whenever anybody traveled and they are coming back, whether they went to America or Britain or even South Africa, they will bring me a tie. And so after some time, I said, can't these people find something else? Everybody, tie, tie, tie. God was going on and I heard God say, you sow ties. You are reaping ties. I said, oh, okay. So I found some of the pastors who wear the same uh, shoe size as mine. And I gave them shoes. And I waited. One month, two months, three months. Nobody bought me shoes. Ah. <laughs> so I went back to God. Where are my shoes? <laughs> because I know the law of harvest must work. And the Lord spoke to me and said, when you sow corn, you will reap in three months. If you sow cocoa, you have to wait for three years. That as precious as what you sow is, so how, that's how long it will take before the harvest will begin to come. And soon, shoes began to come. Whatever you sow, that's what you will reap. You sow something good, you will reap something good. You sow something evil, whether you believe it or not, evil will be waiting. I'll give you just one more example. I was once teaching in one village somewhere in Nigeria. I don't want to mention the place. And in that village, there was one man. He was tough. When it comes to wickedness, he was number one. As he was so tough that if you are passing through the front of his house, you tiptoe. And he had only one daughter. And one day, he traveled. Before he came back, some six boys raped the daughter. They raped her until she fainted. So every, when it did, people in the town heard, they said, okay, oh, those six boys are dead. Because when you don't offend this man, you are in trouble. Now, <laughs> when he came and they told him, everybody thought fire would fall. You know what he said? He said, I'm reaping what I sowed. He said, God is repaying me for what I did to other people's girls. What are you sowing? Harvest coming. There's no way, no way you can stop harvest from coming, except you restitute your ways. Because if we'll be sowing some evil things, before that thing can begin to produce fruits, if you quickly uproot the trees by restituting your ways, then all will be well. Maybe I should just give you just one more. Oh, no. One plus one. <laughs> because of the students who are listening to me. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 22, Verse 29, Proverbs 22, verse 29. He said, Seest thou a man diligent in his business, he will stand before kings and not before me, men. You want to reach the top? 
You want to make first class? You want to be the best in the class? You need more than your brain. You need hard work. I said it last Friday. I'm saying it now to let you know how important it is. My professor, my head of the Department of Mathematics, way back in 1963, told us, you have to read the same thing 10 times before you can remember 70%. That's what he told us. He, I mean, he got his PhD from the University of London in 1928. So he, <laughs> he knew what he was talking about. He, so when you read first time, and you think, oh yes, I, I've got, mm -mm, go again, and then go again, and then go again. He said, you have to read the same thing 10 times before you can be sure you will remember 70%. What he said helped people like me. We thought we were brilliant. But when the old man told us, you must add diligence, hard work, to your brain, then you will reach the top. We discovered that he was speaking the truth. So, you, my children, I will just leave that with you. And so you stop wasting time. Stop uh, spending all the time on the internet. You are sent to the university. You are sent to the colleges. You are sent to school to learn. There will always be time for everything. The time for studying is when you are young. I will keep studying throughout life, but there are certain things that you can learn when you are young. Ask the scientists, they will tell you there are certain languages you can no longer learn after you have reached a certain age. My students, my students begin to study hard. Finally, God is sovereign. Everybody should know that. You know the meaning of sovereign? The sovereign means the one who can do anything he wants. Our God is the original, original Kabyesi. He's the one who is higher than the highest. He's higher than anyone else. So when you hear that, uh, oh, the president of a particular nation uh, consider himself as the number one citizen of the whole world, don't argue. Just remember there is someone higher than the highest. And in Psalm 115 verse 3, Psalm 115 verse 3, the Bible says, He's in the heavens. He does as he pleases. Your future is in the hand of the one who does as he pleases. I was sharing with one of my sons not too long ago. Go and read Romans chapter 9. And you will discover what God can do. If he says you will be at the top, nobody will be able to stand in your way. And one thing about him, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4, is that as powerful as he is, he's full of mercy. The Bible says he's rich in mercy. However, in Romans chapter 9, from verse 13 to 16, Romans 9, 13 to 16, he made a conclusion. He put it there for us. That God says, I will be merciful to whom I will be merciful. I will show compassion on whom I will show compassion. If I decide to be merciful to somebody, 
Nobody can query me because I'm the original KBC. And you know what that one means. Many a times we go to God in prayer. And we begin to tell him reasons why we think he should do something for us. And you say, God, you have to do this. I don't you know who I am. I am <laughs> Apostle Supernatural. Does he care? He decides he will be merciful unto whom he will be merciful. Is there anybody here today who needs the mercy of God? Let me see you say, Lord, have mercy on me. One Bible study leader in those days when, when we were younger, we have some little, little disciples. And we call them Bible study leaders because during convention or congress, they will be the one who will teach small, small group, like you call them uh, Sunday school teachers in the church. He was brilliant. He knew the Bible. Oh, very, very well. And so whenever uh, his leader wanted somebody to talk to married people about situations in the family, they asked this boy to come and teach. And he would teach them how husband should behave, how wife should behave, and then he would come to the issue of uh, childbearing. And one of the things he taught the people is that when your wife is ready to deliver, what you should do is to bind all bindables and lose all the loosables and command the baby to come. Behind all demons, you lose all the angels and command the baby to come. <laughs> then he got married. The wife got pregnant. The day of delivery came. He bound, he bound every bindables. He lose all loosables. He commanded the baby to come. The baby didn't come. <laughs> they won. Day two, <laughs> when the third day came, he ran to the back of his house, fell on his face in the bush, and said, God, just have mercy on me. Uh, forget all the bindables, all the loose bush. <laughs> just have mercy. Before he returned, the baby has come. <laughs> Do I hear somebody cry loud and clear to God, God, just have mercy on me. Proverbs chapter 25, verse 13. Proverbs 25, 28 rather. Proverbs 28, verse 13. The word of God said clearly. You conceal your sin, you cover your sin, you say you can't prosper. But if you confess your sin and forsake them, you will obtain mercy. God is sovereign. He said, I will be merciful unto whom I be merciful. You can get him to say, the fellow you have to be merciful to is me. How do you do that? Confess your sin and forsake them. And then you will obtain mercy. So if you are here today and you have not given your life to Jesus, or you claim that you have given your life to Jesus, but you are still living in sin. Hey, there is only one person who can be merciful unto you, and that is God. And for him to come to have mercy on you, you have to confess your sin, you have to forsake them. So if you want to surrender your life to Jesus, if you really mean it, that you want to put an end to a life of sin, come now. I'm going to count from one to five. Before I say five, come and stand before me here, before the altar, and I will pray that the Almighty God will save your soul. And when he has done so, 
you can begin to enjoy mercy. Come very quickly. I count now one. Two. You want to obtain mercy from God, you must confess your sin and forsake them. Three. Hi, precious saints. We are delighted to have you back on our channel and we trust God that it has been a wonderful journey all through incorporating every bit of what God's servant, our Father and the Lord, Pastor Iadeboye, has truly ministered to our life, bringing us blessings, instructions from the depth of God's word. It's our promise to keep you put on this channel, ensuring that your life is forever changed, ensuring that your life is forever transformed as this journey promises to be a very wonderful one an impacting one and one that is thoroughly designed to meet every aspect of your needs spiritually physically and in every wise god's package blessings remain one that you cannot afford to miss in a season as this seeing that the year is running up so many plans and targets you may have and just have to come to reality and one of the ways to believe God's word, because even at the very dying minute, His word will not fail. This is why we are on this platform. RCCG NCP YouTube channel is being designated to ensure that your life is stirred up and it comes to the fullest reality of what God has in plan for you. Seeing your life is at the center of His very will is our concern, and that is why we would always do our best to bring you the best of God's word. We trust that the message you've learned and you've listened to, you've watched, and you've heard has been impactful. I want you to please do the work of an evangelist. And how do you do this? By Paul telling Timothy, do the work of an evangelist. It means there are places where Paul may not be able to get to. There are places where you may not be to preach. This is also an avenue for you to release the word of God to that place. The Bible said God gave the word great at the company of those that publish it. Do well in publishing this video, sending it out to your loved ones, just simply by hitting the share button and share it to every platform that you may come across. There is someone somewhere that needs to hear this message. There is someone somewhere that needs to get blessed. There is someone somewhere that needs to get enlightened, get lifted spiritually, physically in every aspect through this message so please don't let this message just get to you let it also get to your brothers your sisters your loved ones your enemies also ensuring that they get saved and at the end we all will make heaven at last and don't forget to leave us a comment and also um drop a like like this video and please if you are a new viewer ensure you please join this community by subscribing to our youtube channel Turn on the notification bell. This will help you stay in touch with every of our uploads. Whenever there is a new upload, it will help you stay in touch with us. There will be a notification sent to you and you would from there follow us up, ensuring you don't miss out on any of God's blessing and plan for your life. We love you so much and God bless you. See you in our next video.